Do you know what it takes to blow $10,000 this year without even really realizing it? $27.40 a day in miscellaneous spending. Girl, what do you spend $27.40 a day on without even batting an eyelash? $27.40 a day. That's just under $200 a week. Think about how fast you could blow $200 even in a weekend or some of you per day. What if we took that $27.40 a day and put it toward our debt or toward our savings goals? Could you use an extra $10,000 this year? Yeah, me too. In this video, we're gonna talk about how we could maybe find this $27.40 a day and put it toward our finance goals. If this sounds good to you, hit that thumbs up and let's get into it. Happy Frugal Friday, friends. If you've been following me for a little bit, you would know that I have a pretty minimalist approach when it comes to my finances. I have four budget categories that I will recap with you right now. If a simplified budget sounds good to you, please put in the comments, simplify, so I know you want to simplify your budget, which by the way, simplify is my word of the year and kind of my theme for all things I'm working on. Buns wants you to know that the very first important category that we have is called household. So let's talk about the household. These are all the things that you need to keep your house running, to get to your job, kind of to keep things stable. For household for me, we've got mortgage, utilities, insurances, car payment, gas for car, groceries for me, if you know that about me, groceries are part of the household, and cell phone, all the things you need. These are pretty much non-negotiables that if you lost your job, if you had a medical emergency, if it hits the fan, these are the things that you still need to pay no matter what. So these are the big guns, right? Like let's think about this point by point for a second. Mortgage or rent, whichever one you are doing, that's a big one. If there is a chance of downsizing or living a place where it is not so expensive or gaining a roommate so that you can afford your home more affordably, that is something you wanna consider because that will save you big money, not just nickeling and diming in places like that's a big one. Next, let's talk about utilities. This is where as a frugal living channel, I thrive, right? Turning the lights off when you leave rooms, not running the heat higher than it needs to be, not running the AC cooler than it needs to be. Being wise and intentional on your utilities is a great strategy to not spend more than you need. Next is insurances. Eek, this is another one that can be sky high or whatever you can negotiate Whatever can make sense to get those insurances lower, that's definitely something to consider when you're trying to scrounge up $27.40 a day. Can you get these insurances at a better deal? Car payment, woo! I currently do not have a car payment. I have a video on paying off the car. I will leave it up here in the cards if you're interested in that. Having an affordable car and an affordable car payment or no payment at all is very important. You guys know this, I won't go into detail on that. Have a car you can afford. Groceries for me is essential. This does not include going out to eat. This does not include fast food. This is my run of the mill staple groceries that we need for nutrition and to get by. So I put that in the household because it is essential. Cell phone for me, essential. Can you get a better cell phone plan so we can get that down? Anything in your household that you can get lower just means more savings. I want to guess that most of you watching this, if you have been part of the frugal living community for a while, this is something you already have attacked. But if you are new here and this is a new concept and you have not taken a dive into all of these categories, go one by one and see what you can get lowered for big savings. If you want big savings this year, type in the comments, 
big savings. So my next category is savings. I just really felt like Vanna White for a second. Savings. Considering your savings goals after household. Household is what you need. Savings is what you're gonna need for your future self. Savings slash future Kate. Future Kate needs this to be a priority now so that I can enjoy my retirement later. What goes into savings? So if you're looking at my budget, these are the things in my savings, okay? So emergency fund, once you have gotten your emergency fund together and you have three to six months expenses, first of all, congratulations, because that's a big deal. Having an emergency fund to me is essential. It brings me peace of mind and it takes a while to get it you guys you've got to be patient but let me just continue on with what else might be in there the budget buffer the budget buffer baby i did a full video on that i will leave it down in the description if you want to know more about the budget buffer the budget buffer is about a month sometimes up to three months of expenses in your checking so that you never overdraft and you have money in case stuff happens i never worry about overdrafting because I've got a budget buffer. Hey guys, just jumping in because I was editing the video and I realized I said the budget buffer is in my savings. It is not in my savings. The budget bu bleh. the budget buffer is actually in my checking account. Caden, say budget buffer three times fast. Budget buffer, budget buffer, budget buffer. Hey, that was good. So the budget buffer is considered a savings, but it is housed in my checking account. Just wanted to clarify. Next is retirement. Do you have a 401k, a 403b, a Roth IRA, a traditional IRA? I have an M1 finance account, which you can get one too in the description if you want to check that out to start investing. Every single month I contribute to my retirement accounts. And lastly, I wrote savings with intention. Some of you have sinking funds. I do not do sinking funds currently. Mine is more a general fund for what I need, but you have to do what works for you. Some of you have like a vacation fund, a future car fund, house maintenance fund, all these things that are important to you and however you divide it is your prerogative. But I keep it really simplified. So while I'm thinking about it, Saving $27.40 a day instead of spending can come from two places. You can either not spend and save it, or you could earn it. Let's think about that. That's another way to get your savings goals up is to earn $27.40 a day, which equals about $200 a week. What could you do? to make an additional $200 a week to really pump up your income and get to that $10,000 faster. If you have a side hustle that you could share with us that you are currently doing to make extra money, can you leave it down in the comments for us so we know what the K-Squad is up to? What's your side hustle? My third category is giving. Now, as a person who used to be fearful of spending too much in certain places because I just had that kind of scarcity mindset. I was holding on to every dollar tight. And um, once I started to learn to give every month, no matter what, somewhere, it really changed how I saw my budget and how I feel about money. So in the giving category, you would include donations and gifting. Now donations could be to a charitable cause that you feel passionate about. It could be tithing. It could be wherever you are putting your money to support where you believe people need the most support, what you believe in, what you're passionate about. And then gifting, I put gifting in the giving category because it helps me keep track of where I am giving money. So this might be a game changer for some of you because you might forget about gifting. Obviously, Christmas is a big one, 
But what about birthday gifts? What about baby showers? What about bridal showers? What about weddings? What about all the little things that add up that sometimes you're like, you just get it because you're getting it for your friend or your family. It's like, oh, well, obviously I have to get them a gift, but maybe you didn't plan for it or you didn't think about it because there's a lot of people that you might have to shop for throughout the year. And I always prioritize making sure I have a little bit for gifting. Now, if your budget is really tight and you are struggling just to pay for your household, just be mindful of the gifting. The donations, I swear, when I started, I gave $5 the first month, even though things were tight and it just made me feel good that I was still thinking of other people. But if you don't have enough to do your household and you don't have enough for savings and stuff, just be very aware of your gifting, your giving. You wanna be able to give something, but if you can't afford your mortgage right now, you can't be buying elaborate gifts for people, even though you want to, I know. Or birthdays, you can't be buying elaborate gifts if you're struggling to pay your bills and don't have any retirement built up or don't have an emergency fund. You've gotta prioritize, you've gotta take care of yourself, but keep giving in mind because it does change your heart. It changes your attitude on money. And the fourth budget category is lifestyle. This is all your fun choices that you want to spend on. So I have out to eat, entertainment, and hobbies. This can make or break you when you are thinking about your $27.40 a day, right? Think about going to lunch with a friend and picking up the tab. There it is, it's gone, right? $27.40, whoo, out the window. You wanna go shopping for clothes you don't need? $27.40, try double, triple, quadruple, who knows when you go on a shopping spree. If this is stuff you need, that's one thing, but just recreational, miscellaneous, fun shopping, it goes quick. This is where making choices about going out versus staying home can really come into play. Can you find things at home that are gonna entertain you instead of going out? Or if the thing is really important in your lifestyle category, could you cut back somewhere else in your household? Did you make that as tight as possible? Your gifting, did you make that as tight as possible? Don't ever forget about your savings. I think that's really important, but it's also important to live and have a little bit of fun. So this lifestyle category has a lot of wiggle room. And again, if you are not having the money for this category and you're not able to have the fun that you're looking for, where can you make more money? Can you pick up a part-time job? Again, look in the comments. Did the K-Squad leave you some good side hustle ideas? I have a full-time job that I work. So the way that I make additional income is doing YouTube and I am a choreographer. I teach some dance companies pieces to perform at their competitions and performances. So those are the two things that I do for extra income. I realize those aren't typical, so I just tell you in case, but hopefully the K-Squad has some more suggestions in the comments. $27.40 can be gone in a snap. I'm back. I mean, seriously, quickly. The question of the day is, where are you gonna look? So you can squeak out $10,000 in savings this year to put toward your financial goals. And also, what would you put $10,000 toward? Think about how exciting that is. $10,000 just knowing this math and being aware of it. Think of what you can achieve this year. It's exciting. If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe so you don't miss an upload. I upload every single Friday and I hope to see you next week too. If you want more videos that I think you're gonna like based on what we talked about today, I will leave videos here and here for you to watch next. Thank you so much for being here, K-Squad. I look forward to seeing you next Friday. Have a great weekend.